So in the electrical workshop, we've got a brave volunteer in Roddy on. Thank you for being brave and coming up and speaking to me. Everyone else is working behind us. We may or may not get to speak to some of those. We're in the process of doing a level one EAL qualification. This is the first time we've really done a proper electrical circuit and it's at stage three. And I'm gonna ask Roddy on some questions. But my first question to you, Roddy, on is when you're clipping these cables and terminating the ends, how much percentage learning does Gary class that as? 10%. Just 10% of the learning. The bits that I'm gonna ask you now are the knowledge aspects of it, and I expect that to be another 90% of the learning. We believe over time, practicing and practicing and practicing, clipping cables and terminating them, you'll get a lot better at them, but can you retain the information? So, we installed this lighting circuit at stage three, and this made this switch, what type of switch? Two-way switch. And this one was? Intermediate switch. Good lad, and this one? Two-way switch. Good, and if I was to install uh, intermediate switch here, how many more intermediate switches could I actually have in the circuit? You can have as many as you want. I can have an unlimited number of uh, intermediate switches. The the lighting circuit has a fuse in the consumer unit. Can yeah. you remember how many amps it's rated at? Type B, six amp. So it's a type B because it's for a domestic dwelling, really good. It has additional protection in circuit. What device is offering the additional protection? The devices. Yeah, in here, which device is offering the additional protection? The RCD. It is, the RCD. Rec, can you remember how many milliamps it has to be rated at? No so, greater than, yeah, no greater, it's quicker than me. No greater than 30 milliamps in order to offer additional protection. Yeah. We've got our lamp in circuit, we're gonna go live with this circuit, but we don't actually physically do any live tests using an instrument. What type yeah. of test do we do when we go live? Faulty test. We did a functional test, did you say? Functional test, yeah. Uh, did you say functional right. test there? Functional, there was a bit of noise in the background, I think yeah. he said almost functional testing. So we're gonna do the functional yeah. testing, yeah, yeah, agreed. Yeah. Do you remember what size cable we wired the circuit in? Size so cable, one millimeter squared. We did, use one millimeter squared cable. Okay, so we're gonna liven this job up now. Okay, so if we turn it on here, do you wanna turn it on for us? Yeah, go on. So RCC CB first. Oh, you're proving it works. So what? how often do you need to press the test button in the installation? Every six months. Okay, and turn on the breaker. Okay, so let's try a switch. Okay, so it works. Next switch, good. Next switch, brilliant. Which test is this called again, nice and clearly for the camera? F functional test. Uh, functional testing, does it actually work? We've said that they operate. Is there any other switches that we need to test? The RCB. Yep, so you wanna press it for me, see if the light goes out. Reset it for me. And obviously this is also a glorified switch, the six amp breaker, we'd like to break that for me as well. So you want to turn it off as well. And we expect your lighting circuit to go off if there's six, seven lighting yeah. circuits and not something else. So that's really brave. You've only been with me, what, six or seven weeks actually in the workshop. We spend a lot of time doing health and safety. Already we're at the stage where we're introducing dead tests. So the first dead test being? Continuity CPC. Brilliant, and it's measured in which SI unit? Which SI unit? We did we measure the continuity CPC in? Uh, Ohms. It is ohms, so we give them a chance. They've got to have a pause, have a moment. We included another test at the same time as continuity CPC. Polarity. We did the polarity test. What do we put in the polarity box? A tick. Wow, we're on a roll now. I bet you won't get this one right. What does R1 stand for? Resistance of line. Okay, and R2? Resistance of CPC. After we've done our continuity CPC and polarity test, which test did we carry out next? Installation of, installation of resistance. Okay, installation of resistance. And we passed how many volts through the circuit? 500 volts. And was that AC or DC? DC. What's the smallest acceptable value of insulation resistance? One mega ohm. One mega ohm, okay, so fantastic. So there's one mega ohm is in now, so I'll cut, cut through to that. So, it's not too bad, is it? Okay, so you've been with us, what? Eight weeks in the workshop, the rest of the time is doing health and safety. Gary's interested in, can you answer the questions? People will say out there, oh, it's quick fire questions and it's just repeating answers. We add layers of knowledge as we go in. Example being, I might say to you, uh, what type of RCD is this one in this consumer unit? AC. It's a type AC. Which one does Gary prefer? Type A. Type A, and we've gone on and done discussions about that and we've also talked about DC leaking into the line and neutral from things such as um, charging units and such as LED lights and things like that, and we, where DC is relevant in a domestic installation. So we've got all that information going in as well. You can carry on, mate, because that was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I've moved around to Liam, and Liam's just about to perform a test for me. Thank you, Liam, for joining us on Sorry. camera. Um, however, we know that 90% knowledge comes from the questions, not necessarily the doing. So here's some questions, quick fire gas style. Uh, which test are you going to carry out for me? The insulation of resistance test. Good. And which voltage do you set the instrument to when you carry out the 500 test? 500 volts. And is that AC or DC? DC. It is. And um, we're going to measure it in which SI units the insulation resistance? Mega ohms. Okay, mega standing for? One million. It does. And the smallest acceptable value of insulation resistance for an installation? is one mega ohm. Okay, and this is a brand new installation, so we expect it to be above what value? Above 20 mega ohms. Really good answers. I can see you've got a bit of kit here. So, yeah. uh, what's this? Torque screwdriver. Torque screwdriver, so we're using torque screwdrivers. Can you remind me the torque settings for both the yeah. neutral, sorry, the neutral and the earth bars for me? That'd be 1.7 torques. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
and that will be 1.7 torques. So, so that's both for the neutral and the the CPC and the neutral. Okay, yep, so and neutral then, bar and earth bar are at 1.7 newton meters of torque. And then the line will be at 2.3 newton meters of torque. Okay, so we're using a torque screwdriver because it's required. All terminations of the consumer need to return to the required torque setting. So it's important that we do so, and we do here at college. Okay, so is there anything in circuit you've had to make sure is uh, removed in order to carry out the insulation? Yeah, I've had to make sure the lamp is removed from the back lamp holder. Okay. And I've had to make sure the switch is left on. Switch is left on, and in the consumer, any concerns with the 500 volts being passed or anything in there? Yep, this has electronic components in it, and passing 500 volts through would be dangerous and could destroy anything okay. inside of it. And he's talking about the RCCB there. So the RCCB has electronic components in it, and therefore we've left that also in the off position. We're gonna get on with the test now. You've seen it many times on the channel. That was all about what Liam knew. Thank you very much, mate.